Hello, Edward here. Let's take a look at some of the new features and changes in 07.11 software. 07.11 brings over 30 features, enhancements, or fixes, and a lot of those are related to color control. Xerox Color Mixing now supports over 20 different LED emitter colors, uh, including different shades of white, and also supports HSI control. Um, to complement this, we've got a bit of a redesign of some of the color windows that are available to us. For the purpose of this, I'm going to use my Flex console here, uh, and this is my Flex's internal touchscreen. Uh, the very first tab that we've got is the color palettes window um, that we've been used to, but if I go and automatically create some color palettes, I've now got a new warm white and cool white palette available, which is useful to just warm up or cool down uh, the white of your fixtures. Um, next window along is the color picker. Um, which, as we've been used to, we can go and control our color of our fixtures here, and that will be using all emitters that our fixture may have. And just like we're used to, we can go and use multi-touch in here as well. We can also use the image picker, and just again, like we're used to, this will now be able to control all of the emitters that our fixture may have as well. A new addition to the color picker is a temperature fader. Just like we've now got temperature palettes, we've also got a temperature fader. And so this is a useful way of just choosing our white we want and then warming it up or cooling it down if we need to. Clicking on the temp button resets that to middle white. However, however if I wanted to, I could actually say when I click that button, I want it to be a warmer white. And to do that, I could just go ahead and tap record and then go and tap on temp to store that. And now when I click my temp button, it takes me to my default warm white. I'm just going to go and tap delete and tap temp and say yes to reset that back so that I get middle white when I click it. The color temperature fader itself, that's going to adjust color temperature parameters your fixtures may have or instead it might actually adjust different shades of white emitters, or instead, if your fixture doesn't have any of those, it will actually adjust the levels of your RGB, W, or any other emitters, amber, lime, cyan, any other emitters that your fixture may have. Um, on the Flex console, you've got the faders window. This has also been uh, redesigned, uh, and we now have buttons that allows you to set your RGB to full, for example, or your CMY to full, to give you useful ways of getting uh, full black or full white very easily. We've also got our temp button in here as well to reset the temp, as we mentioned, and we've also got a value, value button to set the value to full as well. Mood boards have been updated. So across all consoles, we've now got new mood boards with new colors that are available to us. On Flex, related to this, we've also got updated filter libraries featuring new color values and actually new palettes as well. Um, a whole new GAM color library has also been added as well with a whole new batch of filters. When you apply a filter now, you also get a filter reference. So when you apply a filter, it's not just setting the levels of your emitters to the required values, but actually those emitters will be tagged with the gel number and the gel name as well. Now, not only that, if I were to go and record that into a queue, so tap record, tap a playbacks button. Now, when I go and raise that playback, I will actually get the filter reference appear to remind me what gel is actually in that queue. Color filters are actually now part of the Xeros library, meaning that in future Xeros library updates, you might get new filters added or updated um, without the need for a whole software update to enable that. Uh, so as well as our color controls, other large changes that we've got are related to patching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and open my external monitor so that we can see things a little bit easier. 
Worth mentioning that these color windows are, as well as being available on the internal touchscreen of Flex, we've also got these color, new color tabs available in the color windows on the external monitor. So if we go into setup by tapping our setup key, uh, this will take us to our fixture schedule. Now, one of the new uh, options within the fixture schedule are settings for if your fixture has UV. If you've got fixtures with UV emitters, they will have settings available. And that option that you have available to you is whether that UV parameter is included in the Xeros color mixing or not. Um, if it is, essentially your UV emitter will be treated as a deep purple, and it will then be able to be used by the color palettes, the picker, the faders, and the filters, and they will all be able to take advantage of that UV emitter. But in some cases, actually, you don't want UV to be controlled by your Xeros color mixing, and so you can say, nope, don't include it in the color mixing, and that means that UV now will just be treated as a separate color parameter on the encoder wheels. If we go to add fixtures, one of the updates in here, bottom right of our window, we've got a new parameter list display. So if I go and find a fixture that I want, you can now see in here that I've got a breakdown of the parameters that that particular fixture has, which is useful for showing me uh, uh, suitable fixtures for the light I want to control. Now, taking that a step further, we can actually filter. Uh, add fixtures gives us access to over 25,000 fixtures. And so we've added new filtering options uh, to help you find your fixture you need a little bit easier. Uh, related to that, you may have an unbranded fixture. You might have an unbranded fixture or a fixture that you don't know what it is, but you do know what control channels it has. And so for those situations, you can now go ahead and add in a filter. To add a filter, go and click Add Filter, and you can then specify how many channels that your particular fixture has. Once you've done that, you can then actually go down and say, okay, well, the first channel is pan, uh, the third channel is tilt. And you can start to break this down further until you've got a shorter list of fixtures, and you can then go and find a suitable fixture for your uh, to control your light. We can then take that a step further if we want to, because I can then go and ahead and click Next, and once I've done that, I can choose Export. So you can find a suitable fixture to control your light, click export, and if you wanted to, you could then rename it. So you could give this particular fixture a custom name, export the fixture file, and then you can, uh, if you wish to, use that particular fixture um, to load it in with your custom name. You can actually also add RDM information to that fixture at this point in time as well. And just one other nice feature to mention in 0 7.11, on Flex, you can actually now home individual parameters. So if I wanted to, um, I could look at my fixtures here and actually I could home my blue, for example. And so if I wanted to home my blue uh, parameter, I could go and press and hold the home key and tap the blue encoder wheel. And you will see that in my command line, home blue is written in to indicate that just that single parameter has been homed. To home a whole attribute, I could press and hold home and tap color, and that would home the whole of color for me as well. So go ahead, download the software, check it out, uh, and if you've got any questions at all, uh, do get in touch.